How's it going guys? So today's video is going to be talking about getting your first handgun. Getting your first handgun depends on a lot of things, whether that be home defense or personal defense, whether you're going to be carrying it um, out in public or you're just going to be, you know, having it for home defense. Now, if you're going to be having it for home defense, that might call for a different kind of handgun, maybe a larger handgun. If you're going to be concealed carrying, maybe a smaller gun. So it also depends on your body weight, body size, probably body type as well. That'll all determine what kind of handgun you should get. So first thing is, let's talk about home defense handguns. For home defense handguns, I recommend a bigger duty sized handgun, like the Glock 17 down here, Glock 22, um, some of the little bit smaller ones like the MP 2.0, um, the Glock 19 is great too, but if you're talking about home defense, the size of the handgun shouldn't really matter as much unless you're swapping or unless you're also using that handgun for personal protection in addition to home defense. So now for self-defense, um, if you're a smaller person, uh, I recommend a smaller handgun if you are going to be concealed carrying. So if you're going to be open carrying, the size of the gun shouldn't matter as much. But for concealed carry, you should definitely consider something a little bit smaller. So we'll start off with uh, talking about some of the smaller concealed carry handguns like this. This is the Ruger EC9S. It's in 9mm. It holds 7 rounds in the magazine and then 1 in the chamber. So it's great. It shoots decently well, actually. I've not had any problems with it. Um, it is very small, it's easy to conceal, but when it comes to smaller handguns chambered in the same caliber as like a bigger handgun like this, you're going to get more recoil. So it's going to be a little less uh, easier to control, a little bit harder to shoot, the sight radius isn't as long on them. So next is the Glock 19, probably my favorite handgun, I think this is the best sized handgun. It works. It would work really well for home defense as well as self-defense. This is my daily carry gun. I carry this pretty much anywhere I can carry it along with a spare Glock 17 magazine. Also chambered in 9mm, a gun like this, Glock 19, holds 15 in the magazine and then one in the chamber. Next, in a similar size as the Glock 19, maybe just a tad bit bigger, is the CZ P10C. Now, this, this particular one isn't as customizable as that particular Glock 19, but yeah, you just weigh that in on what you want to buy. If you want a customizable gun, you can always customize them. Yeah, also as well, 15 round 9mm and then one in the chamber. So it's a little bit bigger than the Glock 19. This would work really well for carrying as well as home defense. Now in a similar size as both of them, of them sorry, as a, in a similar size as both of them, we have the Canik TP9 SF Elite. 15 round 9 millimeter as well. Now with these uh, mid-sized guns, these compact size guns, usually they come with an accessory rail so you can mount uh, different kind, kinds of lights if you want. I think that's very important for especially home defense. A lot of people argue having a light on your handgun isn't as important for a carry gun. But me personally, if I can have a light on a carry gun, why not? If I don't need to use it, I'm not going to use it. But if I do need it, it's right there. Now, those are all 9 millimeters. Now we're going to step up into the 40 Smith & Wesson range. This is still in between compact and full size, I would say. It's not quite as full size as the Glock 17 or Glock 22, but it is definitely bigger than the Glock 19, the CZ P10C, and the Canik over there. 40 Smith & Wesson, 4 and a quarter inch barrel. Now with this as well, you do get a 15 round magazine. Uh, 
Also, very decent home defense and carry option. Now, with the 40 calibers and the 9 millimeters, you're going to have a lot more recoil on the 40 Smith & Wesson. Um, it's just very snappy, super snappy compared to, to the 9 millimeter. Um, it's a lot harder to control, in my opinion. But if you practice enough, you can get pretty decent with it still. So it's not a huge deal. Next we have the Glock 22. This is the Gen 3. 40 Smith & Wesson as well. Also 15 round magazine. Now, like I said earlier, especially for home defense, you want a weapon light on it because you can only shoot what you can identify, right? You're not going to be looking at a, you know, dark figure in one of your rooms and uh, assume it's a bad guy and start shooting. One, you're not going to see what you're shooting. You're probably going to miss. And two, it could be your, you know, someone you don't want to shoot. It could be your wife, daughter, son, whatever. It could be an animal. So, yeah, so you need a light to identify what you're shooting at. The other important thing with a light is that many people don't talk about is if a bad guy, perpetrator, or whatever is in a dark area and you are in a lit up area or somewhat lit, lit up area, they can see you, but you can't see them unless you shine a weapon light in that direction. So if you don't have a light and you're in a lit up area or you're, you know, casting a silhouette in some place and you can't see and the bad guy can see, then uh, it's not a good day for you. This is a uh, Glock 17 in 9mm. It is bigger, well this particular one is bigger than the uh, Glock 22 just because of the, uh, what is it, compensator on there. Um, I used to have a red dot on it. I actually put it on the Glock 19 over there. But yeah, something like this, 17 round 9mm, is uh, great for home defense. If you want to carry this, I guess you can carry this if you're big enough. Um, if you, it, I think it works best for outside the waistband carry and covering it. So if I carry this, it's going to be outside the waistband and I'll have a, like a piece of flannel or like a flannel shirt covering it. So it conceals actually decently well if the flannel is not like super tight. So yeah, uh, last but not least the 1911, this is a Taurus PT 1911 AR. Uh, AR meaning accessory rail. This is in 45 ACP generally. I have this one converted in 45 super. So you'll you'll definitely have to uh, change out the recoil spring if you're going to convert it to 45 super. The hammer spring as well. And then the firing pin stop. You have to get a flat firing pin stop. Also you need to have a heavier firing pin spring in there. Just because the gun recoils more, like a lot more with the 45 Super. So yeah. Yeah, getting your first handgun all depends on what you're going to do. If you're going to conceal carry, definitely a smaller concealable handgun will probably work best for you. What I would recommend is the Ruger EC9S and any of these top, top handguns up there. If you're a smaller woman, um, actually I still recommend the Glock 19. These are a little bit bigger than the Glock 19, but I think the Glock 19 is still pretty good if you're a smaller woman. Um, yeah, and the Ruger EC9S or something comparable in size would be great for you. There are some handguns like the Glock 26, um, some FN pistols, some, some other brands out there that hold more than the Ruger EC9S. They can hold 10 or 12 rounds of 9mm. I would highly recommend those two. They're a little bit thicker than this, but that's not a big deal because this one's like, you know, super thin. If it's if it's bigger, it's really not going to be like, you're not going to be unable to handle it or grip it. If you're going to be getting a handgun for home protection, I, de I definitely recommend some of these bigger handguns down here. My favorite out of all of these would be the Glock 17 for home defense. 
for concealed carry slash home defense or like best overall handgun, I recommend the Glock 19. It has never failed me. Glock has a good reputation. But anyway, any of these handguns would be great for home defense. I would steer away from the lower capacity type guns out there, like the 1911. Um, there are ballistic reports out there, FBI ballistic reports and like real world situations that justify 9mm, I think, over uh, pretty much any semi-automatic handgun caliber out there. Not that the others are bad, but I think 9mm, low recoil, high capacity, does pretty much just as well as the 40 and 45 in the FBI uh, statistics, right? So I think that's the best caliber overall. High capacity, definitely, sorry, better than the uh, low capacity stuff there. So yeah, anyway guys, uh, thanks for watching and uh, hope you subscribe, comment.